So how do we actually interpret something like this? How do we make sense of this based on what our hunches were and based on what we're trying to understand? Well, we interpret these Q QCA results this way. We can, we can claim now that we know that there are at least two combinations, and I referred to the fact that there are more, but at least two combinations of contextual conditions that lead to, TF that lead to TFA alums support for and promotion of incentivist reforms. So the first combination of conditions means that if you are a TFA alum who is white, who comes from a middle to upper class community, who has no traditional graduate school experience, but who has maintained a moderate to high level of involvement with the organization, your likelihood of becoming a policy entrepreneur is quite high. Okay. Here, uh, uh, and for the second set of conditions, we found that if you are white and if you maintain a moderate to high level of engagement with the organization, and if you didn't teach for very long, if you taught for less than three years, but you had a positive perception of your experience while you were, while you were in the program, then your likelihood of becoming a policy entrepreneur, uh, again, if you look at point A5, it's quite high. Okay? <coughs> so how do we make sense of all of these? Well, overall, we saw there were actually eight combinations, and some people might say pathways, okay, even though this is not path analysis, but eight combinations of conditions that were linked with becoming a policy entrepreneur. Well, some people might say, well, what do we do with that? We know that eight different combinations exist. Well, as a qualitative researcher who studies social phenomena, and if you'll recall at the beginning of the talk, I shared that one of the challenges uh, methodologically to studying urban education is that it's complex. There are multiple things happening at any one time. And anybody who has studied schools, gone through schools, uh, evaluated schools, worked in schools, know that these social phenomena are complicated. And so this allows us to say it is complicated. And there are multiple uh, experiences that core members can have that are going to lead them to become a policy entrepreneur. But what we also know is that there are certain conditions that we find are repeatedly, uh, are, uh, are, that contain repeatedly high consistency and coverage. Right? Race, the race of the participant really matters. And, uh, race matters in seven out of the eight combinations of conditions. Okay. The socioeconomic background of the participant also matters. In six out of eight of the combinations of conditions, uh, uh, SES mattered. Involvement in TFA. If you stayed engaged with the organization, if you continued to hear that messaging that I foreshadowed earlier, the messaging around certain solutions, policy solutions for inequality, uh, that's going, that also predicts your likelihood of becoming a policy entrepreneur. And then the number of years teaching is quite uh, is is pretty associated with this outcome as well. So in six out of the eight cases, if you stayed in the classroom beyond three years, you were much less likely to support incentivist market-oriented reforms. Okay. So let's talk about this qualitatively. So in other words, when a Teach for America alum is African American or Latino. It's from a lower SES background, attains a traditional university-based graduate education, and minimizes his or her exposure to TFA's messaging about the causes of, <coughs> of inequality and its solutions. Or if the alum is African American or, or Latino, has more experience with classroom teaching, but recalls his or her TFA experience negatively and minimizes, again, uh, his or her exposure to the TFA's messaging, then she or he will rarely support and promote incentivist policies or become a policy entrepreneur according to these results. Okay. And we can go on and construct narratives around these now and flesh these out based on our other uh, forms of qualitative evidence about our, t our, our, um, our alumni's experiences and their reflections on their experiences. But we know from this systematic analysis of 117 interviews we were able to step beyond coding them for certain broad patterns and to say there are eight specific pathways that lead to these career or th these uh, these um, orientations towards policy and reform. At the end of the day, there are eight, right? and it's important to see what's not included in there as much as what is it what is included in there. Right?